Now let's look at the local descriptor table register, LDTR. So I said that this is a register that has a 16-bit segment selector, like we already learned about, which you had seen placed into the segment registers like CS, DS, ES, etc. And so it has a 16-bit segment selector, and then it has a hidden portion, just like those CS, SS registers. The hidden portion again acts as a sort of cache to take information from the table, which here will be the GDT table, and cache it here so that it doesn't have to be looked up from memory every time. So the segment selector itself, because it is a you know has a table indicator bit, the table indicator bit must always point at zero to say it selects from the GDT because the LDTR is how you find the LDT, and so you can't have a self-referential thing saying, oh yeah, I'm the LDTR and I point at the LDT, otherwise you wouldn't be able to find the LDT. So just like the GDTR, there are special assembly instructions to read and write. The LLDT is load a 16-bit segment selector. So again, you can only hit this visible portion. You can only load up the visible portion uh, of the register. And then SLDT is again something that's not privileged and which will take the 16-bit value and store it out to memory if someone wants to read it. All right, now showing that slightly differently using the diagrams that I showed before. If the LDT register, the 16-bit visible portion has a segment selector, has some RPL, I said that the table indicator must always point at the GDT because it can't be finding the LDT via itself. And then let's just say the index, you know, pointed at three. All right, so index pointing at three would select some data structure from the GDT, which we learn about in the next section. And that would talk about, you know, here is the base, here is the size of the LDT. And then behind the scenes also, this is filling in the hidden portion, just caching the information about what is the base, what is the limit, what are the attributes of the LDT, so that the hidden portion when you look at the LDT register, if someone's accessing LDT information, it's all just cached here in the register for looking up the LDT. Okay, so one more time, the table indicator, the segment selector is going to be some sort of thing that is stored in a register like CS, SS, and the segment registers we learned about, or LDTR now we've learned about. And we've got these special purpose registers that, you know, a table indicator might say it's pointing at some particular uh, table, but the special purpose registers are how the hardware actually finds those tables. And then the tables themselves are a set of data structures that are stored in RAM. So what is the point of the LDT? Well, the original point was to give different processes different views of memory because the LDT could have, you know, 8,000 different entries. So you could imagine 8,000 different processes have 8,000 different segments covering 8,000 different ways of looking at memory. Practically speaking, no one actually uses it for that these days. Instead, they use a mechanism called paging that we'll learn about later on in the class. So there's a good blog post here, which I recommend you check out, which talks a little bit about how Windows used the LDT for user mode scheduling, but ultimately it was removed in Windows 10 update at some point in favor of another mechanism which you know, we'll actually see about later on in this class. But this is good sort of historical perspective, and it'll show just how you, know, you can only read certain you know, OS internals type blog posts if you have the kind of information that's talked about in this class.